Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, for yet another edition of your favorite news magazine program, 90 Minutes in Africa. I am Bo Elvis, thanking you uh, for being part of us today. Uh, today we begin the program with the latest news from Africa. Senegal's government vows to ensure peace and tranquility uh, returns to the country after police uh, fired tear gas in clashes with supporters of opposition leader Usman Sonko after a court ruled that he should be placed in custody earlier this week. This Saturday in the Ivory Coast, 7.5 million voters are called to the polls to renew their 25 uh, deputies. All major political parties are participating for the first time in 10 years. Supporters of Laurent Gbagbo, who boycotted all elections since 2011, are returning to the electoral arena. Those are our top stories for the day. Time for us to also take a look at some of the major uh, making, uh, news making headlines uh, during the week. It is time to watch Africa uh, Web Zap. I'll be right back. Africa Web Zap on my media prime, The African Eye. You're welcome to 90 Minutes in Africa. In today's edition of the program, we are going to be taking a look at uh, women issues, what women can do uh, to uh, boost the development agenda in the continent. And today we are having some iron ladies with us in the studios and others who are going to be joining us uh, via Skype from Africa and in Europe and America. Uh, I begin by introducing my guest here with me on my love is Madame Giselle Yetambe. Uh, she is a president for the support of uh, female entrepreneurs in Cameroon. Madam Giselle uh, Yetambeng, thank you for accepting our invitation and welcome to 90 Minutes in Africa. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here to discuss uh, women's matter and the development of the continent. 
Thank you. We will know more about your association and what you have been doing to ensure that the African uh, continent becomes emergent uh, as far as uh, the contribution of women is concerned. And uh, right here on my right is uh, Natalie Kembu. She is uh, an investment consultant, a communication consultant too, uh, who has worked in Europe and in so many African countries, and she's back in Cameroon. Natalie Kembu is a consultant for those who want to set up companies in Africa, they usually consult her. And she is also the publisher of Events uh, Magazine, a magazine that focuses mostly on business. Natalie Kembu, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here today to discuss on women issues. And we have um, our lady of the house, uh, Bar Queen. Of course, those who watch my media time already know her. We call her the Iron Lady of the House. Uh, she is a politician, and of course, women are becoming more and more involved in politics. In fact, they're taking frontline positions in politics as far as the development of uh, Africa is concerned. Uh, they, they are no longer in the kitchen, and Bar Aquin has proven that on several occasions. Bar Aquin, this is your baptism of fire for 90 Minutes in Africa. Thank you, Mr. Kembo. Thank you to my co-panelists. Thank you for the special invite on this very important program of 90 Minutes in Africa. I'm so blessed to be your invitee. I want to send a special greetings to all the women in the world, especially those in Africa, because, you know, we are moving towards the celebration of Women's Day. And so um, I am pleased to be your invitee to be able to talk about the impacts women will be able to do to improve the world and Africa. In Africa. And here on my right, next to Natalie Kembu, is uh, Focha Glenn. Focha Glenn is a youth leader. Uh, he's an engineer and also a youth leader involved in uh, women emancip emancipation. Because when we are talking about um, issues related to women, we don't only focus on what women are doing. We also want to know what the young people are doing, uh, uh, what the young people are doing, and men in particular, to empower women. And uh, Focha Glenn is a politician, a politician and engineer, and... Um, he accepted to be part of the panel today, and a future husband too, you know. So, uh, Focha Glenn, welcome to the program 90 Minutes in Africa. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as uh, the uh, technicality uh, um, approves, we are expecting to have other ladies that will be joining us uh, via Skype. We are expecting, uh, we are ex expecting Madame uh, uh, Lumbi. Mulambo, uh, see she is our CEO and founder of uh, GB Dondolo, uh, that is, uh, and also a UN Global Leader. Uh, Madam, Madam Mulambo, thanks for joining us on 90 Minutes in Africa. Well, thank you for having me here. Want to thank you. Look to it. Want to thank you for your patience. Want to thank you for your patience. Uh, we are happy that you are, you are here. So um, we are also expecting uh, Madam George Pauline Onobiono. She is a female entrepreneur who will be joining us. Normally she was supposed to be uh, in the studio today, but unfortunately uh, she had um, to do something and she, she says she will be joining us via Skype. So we are also expecting Madam Onobiono. Uh, I think, uh, and uh, also we think uh, Madam Madam um, Helen, Helene, Helene Are, Madam Helene Are is also going to be joining us from the USA. Hello, Madam Helen Are, are you there? Anyway, we are going to be joining her um, any moment uh, from now. If you're just joining us, you're watching uh, 90 Minutes in Africa. Before we kickstart our debate topics uh, for, uh, the, the, for the day, we are going to take you to Nigeria, uh, to the Niger State in central Nigeria, where women are engaging in uh, rice production using traditional uh, processing uh, methods, uh, despite producing the finest brand of rice in uh, the Niger uh, state in central uh, Nigeria. The village remains um, uh, underdeveloped and is faced with poor infrastructure. Our correspondent in Nigeria, Michael D.B., sent us this report. In Kwakuti community in Niger State, Central Nigeria, women engage in rice production using traditional processing method. The area is a hub of agricultural activities in the West African country, especially in the area of rice production. The community produces one of the finest brands of rice in the country. However, the village is faced with poor infrastructure. The community head says the people of Kwakuti has been producing rice since 40 years ago in small quantity due to lack of machines. Most of the rice processing is done by women. 
if a woman is uh, process, processing maybe two, three to ten bags, if she has support, you see, she can produce more than, she can process more than hundred because of lack of uh, financial support is most of our problem. He says two sites were built last year by the government where rice production will process in a modern way. Uh, the site is there and we have another one that was built by is it a non-governmental organization? We have almost two sites, but the building, the structures has been completed. But what remains now is just the uh, installation of the modern machines so that the processing will start proper. But we have where we do our local processing. We have more than 15, 20 in the community. The low productivity of rice farmers in Nigeria is occasioned by the use of low technologically empowered agricultural equipment which do not support large-scale production. Thank you. That was, thank you so much, Michael Dibier, our correspondent in uh, Abuja, Nigeria, for sending us uh, that report about what women are doing. We found women that are engaged in rice production using uh, traditional production methods. And we have uh, here with us Madam Giselle Yitamben. She supports female entrepreneurs. Madam Giselle Yitamben, what can we do to make sure that we, uh, to enable these women produce this rice in, li in a large scale? In, Af in Africa, in Cameroon, women have remained, their production have remained at the subsistence level because they don't have the, 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 um, the possibility or the, the resources. The resources, because the capital, because uh, the way the government supports uh, people in, in the field is really divided. Women are men in the all the rural area are in uh, cooperative sectors in uh, cash crops, as in cash crops, cash crops are the one which are supported. While the women are in food crops, where they have to farm with the wool and uh, yes, where they use very light materials like hose and all sort of things. So, if they want to get see the production get improved women should have access to tools, they should have access to capital, they should have access to education. And uh, fortunately today, capital may not be, will not be uh, an issue. And as I'm sure our engineer will talk to us about it because with the digital access to finance, the uh, finance, financial institutions can no more continue telling people that women cannot access to credit because what they need is very tiny, it's very small. Uh, Natalie Kimbu, I don't know whether you wanted to react to this report uh, from Nigeria, sent by a correspondent about uh, how women are struggling to make ends meet, uh, but despite that, they, 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 their communities remain underdeveloped. What's your reaction after watching the story? I would like to begin from where Mama stopped to say that I think women today should not have an issue accessing capital. I, I remember uh, back in 2018, after hosting a conference here in Cameroon, I was invited by an investment expert uh, at the, one of the microfinance institutions who said they were interested in financing women, uh, financing projects in agriculture, so they did not exclude women, which means the microfinance institutions are willing to support. We just need to put in place a mechanism that gives them the, the confidence to be able to reach out to these women. Sometimes, because of collateral, for reasons of collateral, access, uh, these women don't have enough access to capital because the main own the lands, they own the landed properties in rural areas, for example. And uh, because the women don't have access to this, they also don't have access to capital. We need to work towards ensuring that women can access capital despite not owning this property. Yeah, Ba Akwen, uh, let's join uh, Lumbi Malambo, Lumbi, Madam Lumbi Lumam, uh, Malambo. You run an organization that supports um, uh, uh, people in on these underserved and impoverished uh, communities. Uh, what can you do to, to help such women? I, I'm sure you, you were able to watch the report of the struggling women in, in Nigeria. What we need to do is empower the women so that they have the resources they need uh, to become successful, to do their work. Right now, a lot of women are left behind because uh, we're not given the space to, uh, to be heard. But I think if we're given that space to be heard and given the resources, we should be able to do more 
and um, and also get the protection that we need. A lot of women are endangered sometimes because um, they just don't have uh, protection. Uh, yet, what we what we really need to understand and also remember is that women are, are very powerful. We're such a powerful force because we contribute a lot to the economic development and economic growth. So we should not be underestimated. Uh, you know, our value should not be underestimated. Thank you, Madam Mulambo. Uh, the time for patriarchal society is over. Uh, women are now leaving the kitchen and they are taking over, are taking up, uh, picking up leadership roles across the continent. And uh, that is why, uh, uh, as women prepare to celebrate this year's editions of the International Women's Day, today we decided to take a look at the contribution of African women to the emergence of the continent. And that is why we have a powerful panel of ladies today. And we hope they are not only going to show up when we are talking about uh, f uh, women issues, <laughs> because let me tell you the truth, in most uh, television debate programs, sometimes it's usually very difficult to find women to be part of the panel. But fortunately for us this week, it was an easy task, uh, thanks to, to Amy Banda, we were able to come up with a powerful panel uh, with us today, uh, with people in the studio and others joining us from uh, via Skype. So time for us to launch the, the first uh, debate topic of the day, uh, which is uh, what women can do to contribute to the development of our continent, Africa. Madam um, Giselle Yitamben, I begin with you. You already own your association and association uh, for the support of female entrepreneurs. So far, can we have an idea what you've been able to do? Uh, because uh, for Africa to emerge, we need to encourage entrepreneurship. How has your association been encouraging female entrepreneurs? That uh, beyond you know being uh, an entrepreneur or supporting entrepreneur, I'm also a researcher, so uh, I can talk about the women from the research perspective as well as from the entrepreneur. My organization has been supporting women entrepreneurs for the last 25, 28 years, so uh, it's a well-known organization in the country and surely outside because we were, we have won several prizes. We are a member of the World Economic Forum and the Schwab Group. I'm one of said outstanding social entrepreneurs. So uh, what we have been doing, and I would say we have done a lot, but as uh, I've said from the beginning, the, the, uh, the, the, the enterprise of women, many have men at the subsistence level. And uh, with the disruption that has been brought in with COVID-19, I think it's time for women to bring the way they have been seeing things. I'm not sure that we should be following the direction because what is being shown today is that what has been done has not always been successful. So it's time to pause, and we have been pausing, and to get to women for innovative ideas, you know, for the type of economy that we need because for this time, for the last almost a year, we have been living close to our community. We have been living in our houses. We, we used to travel a lot, but now we are traveling so little. So we seem to have more time before many families were disrupted because uh, father was outside looking for job, the mother was outside as well, and then no time for the children. I think it's time to listen to the women to find a new way, where are we going now? So it's time to listen to these women who have always been innovative and always been out, uh, able to get things out of you know, very difficult situation. They see should be on the table to discuss the new direction that we have to take. Uh, for Glenn, as a youth leader, I want you to come in here also as a, an engineer and, and tell us how can we accompany uh, uh, African women to develop the continent by, uh, in terms of uh, technological innovation. Okay. What can we do to make women in, interested in technological in, uh, innovation so that they can help to, to boost the continent's emergence? From an economic perspective, right, resources, as Mawal said, they are already available. The main problem we have now in the country is that we have the women are, let's say, they're not really educated. So they don't know that maybe this NGO or the government has made this available or this is av this is available. So now, the main thing, what from my own point of view, right, the women should have at least on the basis a mobile phone. 
because that's like a weapon with their phones they can have access to, okay maybe this angel has come with a new way of planting rice for example so the rice case they now have they now have the idea of what to do you, you see maybe if the government is giving out machinery or giving out subventions not only the big the big corporations who are already in, in contact with the government may, may get everything the women who are without have a phone they may not have no idea of that, that even exists and they keep on going with the whole the farm and then you see they don't they don't succeed so education is to me should be a priority once they're educated and they know about the digital world everything goes from there let us change madam let us join madam Mulambo to know from her because she that really supports women in impoverished uh, communities madam Mulambo, what have you been doing to to women in rural communities to to make sure that they uh, they, they they are abreast with from uh, technological innovation which is essential uh, for the development of africa well in my case uh we work to provide water clean water in those communities so that women and girls are no longer burdened with having to uh, walk miles and miles to get uh, to collect water because when the water is close to their uh, living headquarters then they are able to do more and spend more time on themselves rather than you know going to collect water which is most of the times unclean anyway and unsafe anyway so uh we make sure that we, we provide those programs that get them out of poverty and that focus on uh their well-being so that they can start new businesses and become a uh, uh, productive community because the thing is uh overall this is a digital age um you see that uh this wherever we go in the countryside wherever we go there is uh, hope, there is connection, there's connectivity. So there's no reason why women should not be, le should be left behind. They should just be given the resources they need to, um, to be elevated and be on the same space no, and no longer be left behind. Because uh, we matter that much in the society. What we do uh, provides and also contributes to the economic growth uh, and empowerment. Wherever you go today, you're going to hear that there is, uh, this movement, there's a massive, massive uh, movement of women, you know, empowering women and uplifting women. So that's exactly what we need to do. And that's what we are doing at JB Dondolo uh, with my team here, making sure that no woman is left behind and that they have everything they need to become successful. Thank you. Let's now get a reaction from uh, Helen Mariare. I don't know whether she's around. Uh, uh, Helen. Helen uh, Manyare, thanks for joining us. You are the CEO of the Change Engine, uh, in, an activist for digital transformation and uh, for development and poverty alleviation in Africa. Uh, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you, finally. Uh, we are happy to have you, Madam Helen Manyare. So what has the Change Engine, what have you been doing for, for, for the young girls in Africa? Um, I was really excited when I was called um, on to, to do this, particularly regards to the fact that it's all about women. And um, the change engine has existed for a little over four years now, but our focus has really been on young people. But then um, this year, we actually launched a training program because the research shows that in Africa, Africa African women have 55% more participation in the labor market than any other continent. So African women turn out to be more entrepreneurial than women on any other continent. And I believe that because entrepreneurs are there to solve problems, women are good at solving problems, not just because we can do it, but because we care about our communities. So that's really what it is. And we're really excited because we recently uh, partnered one of um, our country's telcos to train over 250 women in digital skills. And unfortunately, statistics show that women are 40% less likely to engage in digital skills, to engage in online courses, to engage in self-training and self-learning. So I feel like it's not just about training women at this point, it's about sensitizing women about the opportunities that lie in technology, about the opportunities that lie in lifelong learning, about the opportunities that lie in the fact that technology has reached the gap and created a global market. So geography doesn't have to be any problem, it doesn't have to be a problem any longer. So I feel that um, training is very important. This is what we're doing, we're working um, with Microsoft for Africa and Microsoft in partnership with Orange to train women. The training starts next week. And we are equally working on a sensitization campaign to get more women interested 
unfortunately for us as women growing up, girls are less likely to be trusted in technology than boys. Because there's just this thing in the air that gives women the impression that, oh, maths is hard, physics is hard. And I know that because that's what I thought when I was growing up too. My father had to compel me to do the sciences. So I think that um, training is important, but sensitization is more important. So that's really where we are in the work that we're doing. Thank you, Helen Manyare, to be sincere with you. I was really, really marveled by uh, what women are doing across Africa, especially as I went through your various CVs on LinkedIn. It was so, I was so marveled. Uh, but what, what is quite unfortunate is that we hardly really see what you guys are doing in the media, uh, unless during uh, the, the International Women's Day. So our plea is that you should, I mean, from time to time, communicate about what you are doing to be able to inspire these young girls who are there in the, uh, in the uh, local areas, in remote areas, to inspire them to know that they have potentials. Now, uh, Natalie Kembo, I come back to you now to talk about uh, the, the, what a woman is good at, the, uh, the kind of investment a woman can succeed in. Uh, as an investment uh, consultant, a communication uh, consultant too, I want to know from you what are some of the areas women are likely to, 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 to succeed in if they invest? Okay. I, I think since most of the women are involved in small-scale businesses, if we invest in supporting them to grow these businesses, we would give them an opportunity to really impact the continent. Now, for those that are involved in startups, you will see that there are very few young women who get access to capital. It's a general thing all over the world. If we grant women more access to capital, we'll be able to assist them, skill, and employ more people, encourage more women. First, we, we already have a societal issue that people look at women who have dreams and careers like they are extra kind of i've had people confront me to tell me come on let this thing go get a husband get a family and I, those are women when women talk to me like that i wonder what they, they teach their young young girls in the house when i have young women my age who, who have probably two or three kids already and who talk about who encourage me to drop what i'm doing to get into the home and focus there to me it sounds like how do these women train their daughters what are they telling these young children in the house? Now, I had this, I saw this uh, picture that was very contrasting sometime on the media where we had uh, European girls, white girls, let me put it, on the top and on the bottom we had African girls. The European girls were in school and the African girls in church. Now, I am not saying that I have an issue with people going to church and praying for husbands. I have no issue with that. The family is, of course, an excellent institu institution. It is the base of the society, so I, I have no issues with people getting married. But I think that the society should encourage more young women to know that they can actually pursue a career while at the same time being married. Now, if we educate our young boys, when they are growing up, they already know that if I have a woman that is a career woman, it doesn't have, it's no, it's no issue, I should stand by her, support her and make her achieve her dreams. We have a recent example of our, uh, the lady who just rose to the, to the head of the World Trade Organization. She has a, a successful family, a happy one at that. And she has an impeccable career. She sits on the boards of big institutions like Standard Chartered Bank and Twitter. But she has a family of four. And her husband has stood by her. I mean, I actually saw a news article that just... Wrote... Well, she, she was ridiculed by the press. <laughs> yeah, she, she was. She was actually where she was tied, uh, she, uh, tied the title of uh, the article that came out. And someone wrote, the grandmother is is going to take the head of the, the World Trade Organization. I mean, it sparked a lot of revolt from the readers and the media house. Uh, sent out a letter of apology. So that is already settled and we thank God because so, uh, racist and uh, sexist remarks, as she calls them, are really not called for. I mean, women should be given the same opportunity men are given. We haven't seen anywhere somebody uh, tag the man. The grandfather is going to become... Yeah, so why tag a woman, the grandmother? But if I was one, I would take it. I would just say, I'm, I would just present pictures of my grandchildren with playing. Sure. And, I'll, and I'll she actually has some lovely grandchildren. I would just say, yeah, of course, I'm a proud grandmother. Sometimes yeah. we need to look at things maybe from a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. If you call me a grandmother, I'll be proud because it takes grace to be a grandmother. Of course. Of course. And I want to introduce Madame Ba Akwen, um politically. I mean, at the level of Cameroon, they know you as PCRN, uh, top militant. And uh, you, of course, you are talking in this program from a Pan African perspective. Sure. We've, we, we, we basically agree in the studio that women need to take over leadership positions. Of course. Because women, they have that human feeling in them. They have a heart that understands. They have that motherly feeling in them. And um, 
recently you've been very active in the media, you've also been very active in the PCRN party, which is the political party in Cameroon. Uh, what is your plea to women who are still reluctant about getting into politics? Um, well, Mr. Elvis, it's, um, it's a very important question. You know, um, we're celebrating the 36th edition of the Women's Day. International Women's Day, and the theme was Women in Leadership Achieving an Equal Future for a COVID-19 World. You know, um, women in Africa have that, you know, have that archaic belief that women are only good for the kitchen, women are only good for the maternity. But gone are the days because we're in the 21st century, women in Africa have evolved. We see that women in Africa, like um, my co panelist rightly said, the new Director General of WTH, Ukojo Iwale, who is a lady with, um, you know, with a lot of achievements. She was able to pave her way to be able to be a great leader. So we see that women in Africa are fast, you know, abandoning that archaic perspective of being just good for the kitchen, good for the maternity, and they are taking and they are paving their ways to be able to show to the world that women have talent, women have capacity of leadership. Like in my party, if I may say, we have women who are now parliamentarians in Africa. We have women who are um, prime ministers. We have women who are, are, are rising to the top, like trying to be presidents today. So you will agree with me that African women are also good for leadership positions. And um, Mr. Elvis, uh, to tell you, um, women in Africa are also constituting that great labor force. You know, in Africa, um, agriculture is the first um, power in Africa. So I think that um, African women should be able to get into that perspective of doing agriculture in a high technological way. But the problem we have is that women have that um, low capacity of getting capital. It is a hindrance. It is a, a, a barrier to most women who are involved in entrepreneurship and in agriculture. So we want women to um, get actively to be able to, you know, achieve attract um, investors to be able to invest in them because um, you know um, in our villages today like in the southwest women get involved in cocoa farming women get involved in banana farming that those are uh, uh, crops those are catch crops that could be exploited but now they are used at the local level because their capital is low and the output is very low why because women do not have that advantage to be able to get hold of capital so I think that um, African women should get more involved into politics because at first you know they thought that um, politics Politics is meant just for the men, but today women are getting involved into politics. You know, politics they say um, rules the world. You know, politi politicians rule the world, and everything in the world is being you know mumbo jumbled by um, politicians, all the laws and all that. Like what is happening in the parliament, we are having the new session that will begin in in this month. So it's to tell you that um, African women are evolved. African women are schooled. African women are that multi tax being that are able to be able to garnish both being that motherly person and being that leader because um, we, I, am a, I am a mother I'm a mother of three, I am happily married for eight years today, I am a leader of um, a political party, I'm the vice president and I also lead some associations of youths, so I want to call youths in Africa, women leaders that are youths, to get more involved in politics, it is very important to get more involved in the sensitization of other women to be able to you know, join us in this political sphere to be able to remove that, um, that perspective of the that women cannot, you know, rule. Women cannot take important positions. Women cannot make important decisions. Like what is happening in the Norris and Southways, Mr. Elvis, and all the commissions and all that was created. I think that if women were put at the head of these commissions and others, like the Peter Mafani Musonges Committee that was there for the bilingualism, if a woman was put at the head, the DDR Center, it has a lot of problems today. If a woman was put there, I think that a woman handles issues with a lot of care. Women are sensitive, but men have that carefree attitude. It's not to insult men at this plateau. It's just to say that if important positions were given to women, I think that women were, will be able to, you know, change the world and able to solve the problem that is happening in the Northwest Southwest Crisis. Okay, you know? thank you. Uh, we'll get back to you. Or we'll get back to you, Madam Barquin. Let us join Madam Mulambo. Uh, Madam Mulambo, when I was going through her CV, I was marveled because Madam Mulambo, not only she CEO and founder of, um, of an NGO that supports uh, on underserved communities. She's also a global goodwill ambassador and she's a UN global, she's won a UN global citizenship award. And I would like to know from you, Madam Molambo, how are you able, I want you to inspire some young girls out there, how are you able to rise to the top in your career as a woman? As a woman. Actually, I didn't really hear the question very well. It's, it's not really clear what, um, but. Okay, I want you to know. 
you you able to 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 beat societal stereotypes to rise to the top as a, a global leader uh, i mean being a woman how are you able to rise to the top i want you to inspire some young girls out there okay um yeah so the main goal is to inspire women uh to to be their best so um by empowering them with whatever they need to become successful with tools and also making sure that their voices are heard um even if it's like getting them to be on a bigger stage or even smaller stage uh, that is actually great because that we, they get heard what is more important than anything is really making sure that everyone's voice is heard and that um you know we listen when 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 they talk we listen uh that these people are not ignored because um we really need to change the direction that we're going the the way we're going right now is that uh we cannot always do the, the things the way we've always done them we need to be very uh, careful and really listen to what people are saying because um if we are to solve the problem with gender equality or gender equity we really need to be good listeners um and take notes so that uh we can correct this problem that is ongoing because this is not going to end and especially now with uh covid-19 and everything we're in set so far back this like you know really set back we're losing everything that we all the uh progress that we've made but there's hope that we can um recover some of that progress but we just want to make sure that we're always going forward and not going backward and that means we're listening and allowing people to speak and be heard and be given the opportunity uh to to be themselves and to have that dignity because the most important thing in a woman is to make sure that they have their dignity and uh that the responsibilities are spread all over it's not just the woman doing certain things and the men are not doing other things i want to make sure that everybody is at equal level and um they able to you know to be appreciated pretty much so that's what we do here at Jebi Dondolo and back to you uh, let me come to Natalie Kembu Natalie Kembu uh, can we have an idea of some women that are able to leverage uh, technology uh, practically across Africa generally uh, women women can can benefit a lot from technology let me begin from the perspective of investments the uh, platforms that have been launched so enable you know, women to raise capital all over small small holes, small amounts of capital of course but which are useful since they are all since they are all into small since most of them are into small scale businesses women can leverage technology in making sure that they scale their production they reach their markets because we so far the, the key problem we have is that they produce in rural communities and they have no access to information the middle men benefit from 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 them they buy from them at very low prices and sell at high prices in the cities so i think that if women have access we can use the technology leverage to ensure that these women have access to information now capital wise i think we are actually working on a launch there's a, there's a summit that is coming up uh, in october on the 9th of october here in yaounde and it's titled it uh, it invest summit and we are we are trying to partner with as many women groups as possible to ensure that these women come on board and work with us we also have a platform that was launched recently with free online courses on business those that have the possibility to be able to access this platform can take free courses offered by experts all over the world it was built in partnership with uh, our swiss partners and it's totally free all the courses are free there we have about 34 courses on on now and you can take it completely for free if you are a leader of a, a women's group you can be able to reach out and we'll give you the link to or you just type evolve uh, entrepreneurship academy online and you'll be able to see the free courses and assess them women can actually do a lot if they are given the opportunity to leverage technology and i think we should encourage more of our young girls since our mothers have already passed this revolution we we can encourage more young girls to get into technology and the stem fuse and make sure that they study things that can encourage them to help their mothers even home thank you natalie madam giselle itambe i get back to you uh, the theme of this year's international women's day is women in leadership achieving an equal future in the covid-19 world 
and at uh, the level of Cameroon, I'm sure uh, women in leadership and those having businesses have been having uh, very, very going through difficult times uh, during this uh, uh, period of uh, COVID-19. At the level of your association, um, how have you been able to support these women uh, beat the COVID-19 demon and uh, uh, grow their businesses to, uh, to, to develop uh, the African continent? Uh, thank you, Elvis. The way we ha have been supporting the women entrepreneurs is, first of all, through the uh, through discussion. Because with technology, because, uh, you know, uh, Natalie has been talking about technology, and technology is very, very important. Uh, our friend Lambo talked about going and getting water. Something that we have not been able, we are not raising most of the time is the unpaid labor. What the women are doing inside the house and I believe that with the technology and all the community willing to see the women at the leadership position, I think there should be investment to make sure that that part of the work is no more a load for the women so the women can play at the same level. Because if you have to do the business and go back in the house, take care of all the reproductive work you know you have the children you take care of the children and then at the end of the day you are you care for the the, the the elders you know this part of the problem should be solved by the all the, the whole community and uh, fortunately i will say that with the COVID and the men coming inside the house today it has been you know it has been interesting to see how much men could appreciate the load that was the burden that the women carry when they go outside. What I said is time for us to rethink our society because when the engineers went and did uh, the when and uh, did the uh, caterpillars, uh, all those engines, they were not doing it to have the women continue hoeing the soil. We cannot have the caterpillars and those engines and see the women who in the soil. So there is a role the government should be playing here. There is a responsibility that the government should take in such a way that everybody come to the game with the same, uh, same, uh, you know, same strength, same capacity. Let me come to you, Focha. Um, let's talk about. I decided uh, let's talk about. You're representing the men in the studio today because I'm just a panelist. I'm just um, the moderator of the panel. Mm -hmm. So for women to be able to move to the next level, as far as um, business development is concerned, men have to do something. And as a man, how do, we th do you think we men can encourage women in this emergence uh, agenda right. for Africa? From my point of view, I, we have a problem in, there's a core problem at this moment, because the whole thing is, why are women not doing this? Why are women not doing this? It's like, if you look at it from my engineering point of view, you start checking from the source. In Africa at the moment, we objectify the woman. Like a man must go and pay the bride price, the man must go and do this. If that's why, you look at it, not only in Cameroon, in all African countries, the woman is usually with the mentality of objectifying. The woman is always less left in the house. Like if you buy, if you buy a new car, you either show it off, you, you would not use the, the car to do its full potential. So now, my point of view is that what? We should stop trying to like cure the various symptoms and try to tackle the disease. We should first try by changing our, our mentality. We should no longer be objectifying the woman. You see, like that. If you look at in America, the woman is not object objectified. That's why you see the woman and the man they are the same at the same level. When you come to Africa now, that mentality. You see, once once you go and pay a bright price or you go and do something, there's already a set a, mentally there's already a difference. You see, once you shift from that from that perspective. So I think so, Madam Bahakwen. Maybe we should, based on what he's saying, maybe us the men we should be looking forward to a situation where you and ladies will come and pay the bride price on us. Well, Mr. Elvis, we are in Africa, and our African traditions cannot be erased. 
we in Africa, we are, we, we are known of men paying the bride price of women. It's a tradition. It doesn't mean that if you are, if a man pays your tradi or your bride price, it means you're, you're under that kind of bondage. A woman is supposed to, you know, it, it talk to a man because in most homes today, women are not financially independent. That causes the trouble. That's the problem. Women at one point becomes the housewife. They have that tendency, I am here just to give children i'm here just to cater for the man and the man goes on what happens if the man dies tomorrow you become financially uh, um, uh, not stable you cannot fend for your children you cannot cater for yourself so i think that african women should be able to be financially stable even when their men are still alive that is why i want to encourage men to be able to assist their wives because you know in most homes today when you see a woman who is rising who is intelligent the man will like try to you know diminish the woman try to oppress her and tell you woman you're trying to grow wings which is not the case women are there to assist their men today we say when a man pays water a woman should be able to pay light that is it because the the, the the level of our lives today have increased it's no longer the same like our mothers used to do in the villages hey, so exactly the I, I, of course we are going to come to that because as you know i want to be able to redirect us that we are still on the first theme of the day because we are going to talk about how um women can empower homes you know okay. because we are gradually getting into that now so uh natalie just say something briefly let me go over there and meet uh, helen maniare okay i would like to add to what my co-panelist already said on and talk, and talk on this issue of mindset i think the key issue at this level is mindset how we bring up a girl child how we make them see the society is key we need to work on this if mama says that we need to change our perspective we need to start from there we need to teach the girl child to see life differently not to see her end goal like marriage but to see her end goal like somebody who can achieve marriage and have financial independence at the same time. I think that if we work on that mindset, we would solve lots of problems. Uh, Madam uh, Helen Maniare, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. CEO of the Change Engine and activist for digital uh, transportation, uh, digital transformation. What are some of the uh, specific areas of digital transformation we should be targeting uh, especially during this COVID-19 era? I think uh, with regards to women, I will put a special focus on financial literacy and digital financial literacy. Because I feel that at this point, when it comes to uh, making use of digital financial services, women are lagging behind. And you can talk about it all you feel, but until women have the skills that they need to be able to use these tools, they will not adhere to the tools. We're sensitizing them about the skills, that they, uh, the, the products that exist, and then ensuring them of the safety of this platform and going the extra mile now to train them. Um, unfortunately, women are more, um, men are more inclined to use financial products than women. Because of not because men are better, but just because men need to have more of those skills and more of the exposure. So I feel that if companies or organizations are trying to help the extra mile point needs to get to financial literacy. Unfortunately for us on the continent, no schools actually teach financial literacy. So women are already far behind because we have the burden of care. So there's so many extra things that have to that. So I feel that one thing that we should definitely focus on is ensure that we have access to financial literacy skills. Uh, let me join Madame Molambo. Madame Molambo, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm sure you've been listening to the panelists in the studio, and probably you have a reaction to make uh, based on uh, the analysis they have been making in the studio here. Yes. Uh... Well, what I can say uh, is that um, the focus really needs to be on women more than anything and more than ever before uh, because, you know, we're not like putting men down in any way, but um, men are already in powerful positions. They're already in decision-making positions, and but women are not there yet. So we need to put women in those positions where they can make decisions and where they can empower themselves so that, um, you know, they, they have that opportunity. It really is about making sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to play at the same level field 
and to be able to participate and to be able to have their voices heard. We need a lot of uh, education as well for everyone and a lot of participation and also a change in policies at the private level, at the uh, uh, you know, public sector and in all sectors so that you know, everybody is doing the same thing and everybody is aligned. Um, if we are to get out of poverty, for example, everybody has to be aligned and everybody has to be doing the same thing. That's why we see so much rise and so much, uh, so many companies, so many organizations advocating for the UN Sustainable Goals. There's so many sustainable goals out there for not just women, but for how we can move forward and get to a level where everybody is playing at the same level. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Lambo, who will be coming back to you. Uh, Madam Giselle uh, Yitamfen. Uh, I'm sure many people must have been getting their association uh, for the support of female entrepreneurs in Cameroon. There are some people that are hearing this for the first time. Well, what does it take to become a member of this association? How many members do you have? What does it take to be a member? And what are some of the activities? I think it's important to say that uh, because it, can, it could be helpful to a woman out there. Association for Support to Women Entrepreneurs have members in Cameroon, in Gabon, and in DRC. And uh, in Cameroon, uh, we work mainly now during COVID-19 with women in various districts. So, and we have been partnering with uh, the uh, Minister de Development de la Promotion de la Femme and uh, with the Ministry of Youth Affairs. So what we have been doing, especially in urban areas, is getting women and train them on uh, agriculture out of the soil, identifying the kind of business that can, can take place where they are, and try to mobilize them and work with them in those areas. For example, in Cameroon with uh, the displaced women, the displaced people, who have been uh, rushing in the neighboring areas. We are now trying to build a project around those areas where the women can do the kind of business that they can do in those places uh, and see how we can support them financially. So you, the membership, I've told you that is 25 years of age and uh, the activities that we have, we have training on IT we have uh, the, we had the networking academy that was the first one in Douala which support we train on networking and programming and all those uh, those training programs and then we have vocational training on uh, entrepreneurship and then on some product making okay let me let me go back to to madame mulambo before i come back to the studio madame mulambo you said something uh, that i want to ask you a question about you said that uh, men are occupying uh, positions of responsibility in the world so, and somehow making it difficult for for some women to evolve in the society and when we take a look at the, the ratio of men to women we discover that the percentage of women to men remains higher which means that if women want to take up uh, positions of responsibility today uh, it's going to be very easy for them to do so um, and most of the men that are in positions of responsibility are voted there by women. Uh, what is your reaction on that? Well, I think uh, it's not an easy thing. I mean, it seems easy, but it's not. I mean, I think uh, it's really a matter of educating each other and, and just kind of saying, you know, this is where we are. This is how we've been all along. What can we do better? What are the things that we can change now? Because a lot of things can be changed. A lot of things can be changed. Um, just because uh, men have been doing these positions, these roles, playing these roles for a while, it doesn't mean that um, it's not going to be it's not going to be easy to change that. It's going to take a lot of training mentally, and um, you know, it just it's just a matter of like, sitting down all together at the table and really getting to understand where each person is coming from, where we are all coming from. Both sides have to. Um, really sit down and talk about things. Um, I think that's the, the best way moving forward. That's the best way really to solve the issues that we have right now. Uh, if, we are to if we are to address the gender equality or equity uh, so that uh, there's a way forward. That's how I see it. 
Okay, let's stay with uh, Helen Manyi Are to get her reaction on that before we come back to the studio. Helen Are uh, Manyi, uh, the fact that women uh, women occupy, um, I mean, they don't occupy uh, big positions in the society because men are, are having leading roles, but also to the fact that the ratio of women to men is higher. The ratio of women to men is, is higher, which means that uh, we have a higher percentage of women in the society. But every day women keep complaining that uh, men are picking up positions of responsibility and suppressing women. How come when we are mostly in a democratic world and women can vote other women into positions of responsibility? I feel that when we say when we say that, we forget to take into consideration the fact that for a very long time it had really just been a man's world. So um, it, but I feel that it's particularly on this point, men have to be intentional about bringing women to the table, and women have to be intentional about coming to the table. But then, if some if a certain group of people are sitting in power. On sitting them, it's not just a matter of deciding that you want to do that. It's, not, it's a systemic problem, if you ask me. And I feel that we need to come to a place where we talk about he for she quite a bit, but men need to get intentional about making that happen. Not just because it's um, a societally correct thing to do, but because statistics show that when um, um, there is diversity, um, organizations do better. Because this, this um, the multifaceted of, sorry, opinions that come to the table create a blend that is more helpful. So we can't say women should vote other women. I feel that, and I come back to that, sensitization and empowering of the woman is what we need. Because there's many women with the skills to lead. There's many women with the skills to change things. But then how many women actually believe themselves to be able to get there? And how many systems are in place to help women and encourage women to get to those places? So I feel that um, the solutions need to be systemic, such that it brings everyone the table, existing leaders, future leaders, and, and policy makers to ensure that policies are in place to encourage women. That's what needs to happen. And women actually need to come to a place where they feel that they have a voice. There's the point, there's a part where we fight for a voice. I get that. But then there's also the part where systems have been put in place that shut the door when actually coming in situations like this. So it's, it, it sounds easy, but it's not that easy. It's, it's the, the statistics that show that from the age of six, women, little girls start feeling that they don't have what it takes for technology. It's that bad. So when at the age of six, a child feels that way, you have to bring her out of it. You have to incentivize women. You have to incentivize young girls to get into the sector. So I feel that that is where we should be, as opposed to saying women can in the world. So it's just not that easy. Uh, I'm not forgetting you, uh, <laughs> for sure, Glenn. You know, we need to let the women talk more today. Uh, but basically, I, I want you to, to tell me what you think about the allegation that I just raised, the fact that we have more women that exist, more higher percentage of women, but they keep complaining that men are suppressing them from, from rising to power. Uh, do you really think, have the impression that men are suppressing women from rising in the society? From my point of view, men are not really suppressing women. It's a matter of trust. Like based on our culture, right? Our culture, the woman is not being seen as the like the head. Like for example, if you go, if you come to a family, a woman will not be like in her way doing to we talk about the chopchi and the rest, unless there is no man man in place before the woman will inherit something. Or even in Britain, for example, it was twenty so that they change the law before a, a woman can become queen or king if she's the firstborn. So men, the society itself don't have that trust in a woman. Whenever they see a woman in a leadership role, unless she's too exceptional or something, the trust itself is not really there. So to, to me, my own advice out the woman should like be more open to the public, like digitalize, go out to the media, speak and campaign. Because most of the time, like in Africa, the women will just they'll be among the they'll be among the team, but they'll only show their face at let's say around the, the nine minutes. Why they plan the organization? Most people be seeing the men. So at the end, most people feel they don't have that base trust or that personal connection with the with the woman to put her in power. Like for example, if you look at him, Helen Johnson, if you look at her rise to power, she she was actually at the forefront. So to me, it's just a matter of just being in front. Thank you. And I see, I see, in fact, I've asked a very tricky question here, and I've seen that women in the studio have been bubbling. Uh, I want to begin with the reaction of um, uh, Barakwen. 
talk of um, the majority of women in the world, yet we see that women are not at leadership positions. It's due to the fact that the women's world is so complicated. You know, I read a book that says, um, Woman, Enemy to Woman. You know, in the woman's world, we have that complex been you know women are very um difficult they, they find it difficult to you know to assist their fellow women that's the woman's will the, the the fact that men grow easily is because men are this kind of united people and they do not give um importance to some kind of little little things but women are so complex that they see their fellow woman who is rising as an enemy to her so that's one of the problem and the other problem is women are not confident enough you know like in the political sphere we have women that are shy women need to stand up they need to man up they need to bow they, they need to become bold to be able to you know talk on on important and intelligent discussions that's the problem and the other um, problem is the fact that women are handicapped by this period of childbearing you know in companies today we are caught women three months to go and you know give up give birth to their children and cater for them for months this is a handicapping period that makes women not to hold important positions like for example if a woman is a president today right and it is her period to go and give birth they will accord her three months to go home and you know the country will be you know will still vacant without a leader so i think that those are the the, the some of the disadvantages that make women not being able to rise up at top positions in the world and Africa at large. And secondly, women do not have that assistance from men. You know, in our homes today, women are so, um, they are, how they, they say it in French, ils sont sous chargés. Women have so a lot it. of things to do. They are multitasking. The, the woman will go to work, she comes back home, she cooks, she cutters for the children, she wash dresses, all that for a woman. But when a man comes back, he just goes and takes his bath and, you know, he sits at the coffer and starts, you know, learning and, you know, Watching TV and getting some intelligent discussions with the TV while a woman will basically come back home and start ca caring for the children. She doesn't have time, you know, to go back to her work. Like, you know, those are the, one, those are the problems that hinders a lot of women not rising top. And the first one that I hold responsible is the fact that women do not support other women. It is very important. And we need to sensitize women to be able to support their fellow women to rise up. Let's, let's get a reaction of our mother in the studio, Madame Giselle Itamben, on this issue of men suppressing women from rising. Meanwhile, women, uh, I mean, a uh, higher majority of uh, the, the population, how come? Uh, I would not take the question that way. Sometimes the first thing I, have, I, I, I ask is, what, how do you describe happiness? Because uh, if the words, if happiness is clear in our own mind, we can see the direction where we are going. Because uh, why should we be rushing? Are we happy with the world the way it is to be rushing and trying to be in that shoes? I think it's time for us to start really questioning. Are we happy with the war? Are we happy with all the divisions that, is, that are existing in the world? Those are the questions we have to pose before starting trying to rush to, 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 to get into the race, in that, that race. Are we happy with the world the way it is? And that's where I really think that with, uh, I believe that women should be the right leaders now because they are bringing the kind of world that people need, the empathy, the emotion, the care. Because that's what, uh, if you finish describing, the, you know, defining happiness, mm -hmm. then we can see what is the type of person we, are, we want to be there. It's not just competition at the age of 50, they trash you because you are retired, and then they move to another one. I don't think the men themselves are, are, are happy with all those people. You finish fighting, 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 and then at the end of the day, you are out of the game no norm and then some other coming and that is uh, uh, that's why sometimes with women with my women entrepreneurs the discussion start with how do you define happiness and then what is the ecosystem do you really believe that you are the only one in the world so now with all this discussion around the ecosystem women are coming with new kinds of business that can be done you know taking care of whoever is around. So there are new kind of business which is, you know, env environmental friendly, which women are coming and I'm sure that, you know, that's the direction where we are going to because we are talking of 
global warming, we are talking of war, we are talking of many things. So I really believe that uh, men, even their leadership is questionable. They have to question it and maybe join the women to find, to define the new kind of leadership that we need for the new world. Thank you. Madam Giselle Hitamen. If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching your favorite news magazine program, 90 Minutes in Africa, coming to you from My Media Prime, the African Eye. Time for us to get your control room and get the except of uh, Amy Banda, a journalist uh, who is so much involved in women empowerment. She was very helpful uh, for the realization of this program. She has a motivational word for women while watching this program. Amy Banda, are you there? Then you have the floor. Hello Elvis, hi to all your wonderful panelists and uh, special greetings to the viewers of your special program dedicated to celebrating the efforts of women driving change in Cameroon. You asked me the question how we can empower women. I'm just going to give you seven straight ways I wish you can empower women. Provide a ticket to clean water. Support girls and women in crisis. Mentor a girl close to your home. Invest in a small business owner like Irene Barra does all the time with her wonderful online show on Facebook, Instagram, and all the online platforms. She doesn't keep it to herself. She passes it on to another so that we all can be strong, for we are strongest when we cheer one another. I need not overemphasize on that. Use your voice to keep the girls in school. Help a new mom. Tell the women in your life that you care. And I'm going to use your platform, Elvis, to tell all the wonderful women who are your viewers all over Cameroon, Nigeria, Rwanda, Ghana, Uganda, Tanzania, Egypt, and other parts of Africa that they are worth it. Yes, you are worth it. You have value. Let no one talk you out of that. You have a special gift that you must use to build your nation. You are a queen. The only problem mm. is you're competing with yourself. But you keep doing it fine. Just keep doing us proud. Don't you settle for less. And when you have time, take care of yourself because you are adorable. You are outstanding. You are wonderful. And you're such a beautiful sister. Happy Women's Day to you all. Love you lots. Thank you, Amy Banda, for giving a smile to uh, all our viewers and also to the panelists here in the studio. Time for us to usher in our second topic of the day, which is about how women can empower homes as women try, as women are rising uh, to uh, leadership positions across Africa uh, by doing all it takes to empower the continent economically. Uh, there are fears that if uh, women focus only on business, then we might lose, uh, we might not have a good home. Uh, because women might, women might not have the time uh, to, to really mentor their kids. They will not have the time to bring up their kids in a moral way uh, so that they can uh, be a reference in the society. And that brings in our second topic, what can women do to, uh, to empower their homes? Should women only uh, remain in the kitchen? Should women only uh, wait for men to go out and fetch the daily bread while they're just there to cook? And, and, and clean the house. And uh, I think um, I'm going to begin this topic by uh, with you, and Natalie Campbell. Natalie Campbell, uh, what do you think women should do to to, to empower homes uh, in such a way that? Because b let me tell you, let me tell you something, and that's the truth. Most men are complaining that they have women are working, but men never see where the money goes to. Women are. We find with female entrepreneurs, they are doing so many things. They are. But at the end of the day, you find a big, a very, very senior, senior entrepreneur coming back to tell to your husband, give me money, let me go and do my hair. So men are having the impression that they are being duped uh, by women and that women are working, but they don't want to empower their homes. What do you have to say about that? I think just like in everything in life, we need to strike a balance. We need to be able to strike a balance and we need to be able to change the paradigm shift and the way the women think. We were brought up in a society where we believed as women that the man should always give. My friend recently traveled to Cameroon and told me he took out, he went out with some group of ladies and when it was time to pay for the lunch, he was like, okay, this is what I have. And he, they, he was waiting for the ladies to complete it, of course. But they found it very strange and they called him all sorts of names. Now, because when, I go to, when you go to a coffee shop out there, 
everybody pays for their coffee. But a woman in Africa, in most parts in Cameroon especially, believes that the man should spend and she should be at the receiving end. That has to change. If, you, if, you are, if you're a woman and you work, you should be able to encourage the man to, to support you. The man, should, the man should know why he has to support you the more. If at the end of the day you bring 50 francs on the table, he's happy because you support him. And in turn, he will give you more support and lift you up. But if you bring the money and keep it somewhere nobody knows, I mean, if you're actually married and you're a couple, there should be some sharing, I mean, transparency in managing, management of finance. We should teach our young women and mothers about transparency in finance in a couple if you're married have to be transparent finances should be managed in a transparent manner of course everybody will tell me ah, your husband doesn't have to know how much you earn but is it has it helped us this far if we are in the 21st century and we are still talking about women empowerment and women having access to finance we have been keeping this money in the backside without declaring it to our husbands has it helped us this far if it hasn't if we question ourselves and we see that it hasn't helped us i think it's time for us to rethink and start thinking of how we can manage our finances in a more transparent way to make sure that our husbands see what we are doing, see the, the returns on, you can't leave home every day, you walk, you walk two, four, seven, and at the end of the day, the man has the impression that nothing is adding on the table. Then you, you expect him to keep supporting you. It doesn't work like that. We are women, yeah, but we should also understand that the men need reasons to be able to support us. So let's not just look at ourselves from the women perspective and forget that the men need a reason to continue backing us in our projects. Let us move over and get uh, uh, Madame Molambo. Madame Molambo, she has traveled extensively across Africa, across Europe, and in America. And I'm sure, Madame, Madame Molambo, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that uh, what women need to do really is to take the lead and uh, be in the power and in the position of making decisions. And at home, uh, by promoting just that self worth. I think it's more important um, in just educating other women about themselves and uh, to take pride in themselves and to value themselves as being worthy um, and worthy enough uh, that their, their decisions and whatever they do and whatever they say matters. It matters so much in the society uh, because by encouraging each other, we are actually trying to get the, the women out to do something and to uh, empower others also to do the same thing. Uh, I keep saying it over and over that, you know, the role of a woman in a society and everywhere else is very powerful and it should not be underestimated. As long as we recognize that, um, that we are human beings, we are individuals, we have feelings just like everybody else and um, it, we, we can actually get out of this sense of you know you are number second you are, you are number two he's uh somebody else is number one make yourself number one make yourself number one wherever you are i think we should be telling each other that um we matter that much and our influence uh in the society can can be a huge impact we should invest in ourselves and um invest in others as well and believe that we have what it takes to change the world and to be better. Okay, we, we stay with Helen, Helen uh, Maria Are. Helen Maria Are, I want to know from you uh, what women can do to empower their homes. Because the more women get involved in entrepreneurship, the lesser time they have to take care of children and raise exemplary kids. How can we uh, solve that situation? I feel that in this particular situation, men need to step up. That's what I think. I think at this point, we're talking about the emancipation of the woman, and we're talking about he for she. The only way a woman has room to be anything else other than a wife and a, and a mother is if she has help. And as, as great as it is to be able to have the help of a help, it's better to have the help of another parent. That's why we're two, actually. I believe that First off, kids whose who's, uh, dads or whose fathers are always absent are not as balanced as kids who have parents, both parents being present. So I feel like if men will step up and understand that parenting is a two-way street, the only parent is not the woman. It's not, the, it's not only the woman who is in charge of making the kids who they become tomorrow. Nurturing should, be, should go both ways. 
as much as men are the providers uh, in in my African context and actually according to the Bible, but the, the the context have changed a lot. Things have changed a lot. The requirements have changed a lot. Many men no longer want what they call a liability. They want a woman who brings stuff to the table and they all admire the work that you do. It takes time to do that. Work. So I feel that in this case, men need to take up some of the responsibilities at home. It doesn't have to be washing or cleaning. It could be. I don't see any reason why not. But then when it comes to parenting, looking after kids, helping kids do assignments, be present, take kids to the hospital, actually collaborating with their wives, I feel that if that happens, women will feel safer when they are not at home. And when they are home, they'll have more time to be able to work and other things and still grow their families. So I feel that the partnership part of marriage needs to come in strongly in this particular situation. And maybe too, we might need to, uh, Helen, you're not going away. And maybe too, we might need to look at the issue of the bride price. Maybe that is what is conditioning the minds of uh, the society. Maybe. I feel that, that you'd, be, you'd be very surprised to find out that bride prices are set up by men. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that it's actually the men who set up the bride prices. That's, that's the irony. Because I, as a woman, I don't give a sh I really don't care whether they pay a bride price. It doesn't come to me. Do you understand what I mean? So part of it will go to my mom, no doubt. But then the bulk of it goes to the men. And even when you say, oh, this person I want to get married to isn't that rich, she doesn't have all the funds, the uncles and the grandfathers, and they come and they're like, nope, we sent you to school, we trained you, we this, we that. So the, the discussion about the bride price is actually one that the men need to have. That's what, when, seriously, when it comes down to it, it's the system. It's the culture. That's what it is. So, what we're saying that they have to, I tell you, if you ask me, it should not be eliminated, but it should be made reasonable. Because there's cultures that ask for 2 million, 3 million, 5 million amounts of money that you could use in buying a house. So, you, the answer to your question, we should talk to the men. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Ari. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching 90 Minutes in Africa coming to you from my middle prime, the African Eye. You can send in your suggestions, you can send in a message, or using WhatsApp, or using um, the SMS. No, my SMS, we've received a message. Uh, a woman, hey, hey, you are beautiful. Thanks. Hi to your beautiful guest, and kudos to them, and happy Women's Day in advance. I just wish to encourage more women in, in life skill domains uh, in Africa. Uh, but they should do so with humility in Diwumi Manuel from Dwala and Diwumi Manuel. Thank you so much for sending your message. Greetings to you and all the panelists. Women should change their mindset because when you see a woman coming up strong, only the woman will go around discouraging her with some kind of talks. Only God knows why. Complex is killing our fellow African women. Chanai Bruce writing all the way from Yaoundé. You can join the conversation and uh, send in your contribution via SMS or via WhatsApp. And of course, I encourage women to, to participate. If you want to be part of our uh, 90 Minutes in Africa or, or, or WhatsApp forum, you can also send us a message. Or if you want to be guests in this program, we are open. And we also encourage women to be part of this show. Let us come to our mother in the studio, Madame Jize Yitambe. We have been, we have heard lots of things from the uh, point of view of experience experience we want to know from you um, as an entrepreneur and as a woman who mentors other entrepreneurs across Africa how have you been able to be an entrepreneur while at the same time being a mother to your kids and while at the same time be uh, be a submissive wife to your husband <laughs> uh, not really a submissive wife but a, a good companion to my husband so uh, how has it been? I will say that uh, many men are happy to see their, their women, you know, becoming leaders, being seen. They are also very proud and they can be supportive. So when they usually say that behind the big man is a big woman, and behind the big woman is also a strong man who has been very supportive. If inside the family you don't have the support that is needed, it will be hard to do whatever you have to do. And our, our, our sister from the uh, U.S. raised an important issue. I think you should call the panel for men to come and discuss this issue of dowry. Is, 
important. It's a nice thing. It's cultural. But also, sometimes the blame is put, they are pointing to the women while the women should be discussing these issues. As the men also, you should even call a panel for these women issues because it's important for the women to know what the men are saying, not from outside, you know, to sit on the table and then discuss about these issues of women. So I think it takes the environment, the supportive environment, the family, the supportive, you know, family, the supportive uh, government, the supportive institution to uh, bring the women where they are. So I've been lucky to have all these nice people like you, like all these beautiful daughters around who have been very supportive. And I really understand that sometimes, you know, there are women in humanities to women just because, you know, when you are not at the top, at the higher place, uh, you are all competing. It's not easy to people who are not at the top level to, you know, because when the men bring one, they t just so show that woman that she's the only one. So, and that is the only place for the only woman. So it's not e easy to be supportive, you know. We have to, to be able to come in with a bigger space, you know, request for some quota. So when the quota is put in place, you can really say that, okay, this is 30%. Let us see how, you know, it's only one. But if it's only one woman, how can you? It won't be easy not to fight the other to, you know, to march on the feet of the other one. So that's what I have to say on the subject. Thank you, Madam uh, Yitambein. Uh, Mr. Sh just coming in. Greetings to all on the panel. A very interesting and inspiring program. Please, the lady in goal should repeat the name of the uh, the name of the the online platform for courses on business. Thank you. I would like to be part of your 90 minutes in Africa forum. Thank you so much. Please, when you are sending your message, make sure you give us your name. Uh, can you just kindly remind the person sending the message on the, um, the name of the online platform to, to come and uh, get some online courses on business? Evolve Entrepreneurship Academy. Anyway, if you need it, just uh, write me using the WhatsApp number, and I'm going to, to send uh, that to you. Uh, I think it's time for us to, to run off the program. We begin uh, with our panelists that are in Europe, America. Uh, I begin with you, Madame Mulambo. Uh, Madame Mulambo, uh, your concluding remarks uh, on the, the second topic, how women can empower homes, uh, and your concluding remarks generally on the program. Yeah, uh, you know, I just want to really uh, thank you for having me on here, but uh, also to kind of highlight uh, the importance uh, and the role that women play in the society and uh, to not underestimate or to, uh, to devalue um, their, um, you know, their importance. Um, just to know that the future depends on women and that women really hold the keys to everything, to the, they hold the keys to uh, the success of Africa. Um, and all, all that it takes is uh, supporting the women and understanding that uh, there's a lot of movements, there's a, there's a lot of people there's a lot of talks everywhere um, about women and women's movement and supporting women. If you're not supporting a woman at this time, you're going to be left behind. All the conversations these days where go are about women. So um, that's women at home or wherever you are, any place. They, they will just really play a pivotal role in everything that is happening in society. And we just need to realize that and everybody needs to realize that and support each other and discuss this and come at the table, come to the table with your ideas and come with open minds because we all come from different backgrounds and um, different upbringings, uh, but we all have one thing in common, to be happy, to get out of poverty, to have equal rights, to be appreciated and to be heard. Thank you so much, Madam Mulambo. Uh, Helen Mayare, your final word? Uh, for today's edition of the program of course hoping that we are, we are going to have you again and again in this program and all our programs on my media plan sure i'll be delighted um this was a very interesting experience particularly seeing um other women in the country doing all this really exciting work for me i feel that i'm really blessed and i'm happy that so much is being done and it was also very interesting to hear the opinions that men have of women and the things that they are saying 
quite worried if you ask me. So I agree um, with Madam when she says that we should bring more men to the table. Let's hear what they actually think. Let's get their perspectives. And what I believe as a woman does not necessarily um, speak for every other woman. So I'm not saying that every woman understands, or every woman is exposed, or every woman knows, but then that would bring me to my conclusion. I feel that sensitization and training are two points that absolutely need to be brought to the forefront. There's a lot of talk now. There's lots of conferences, there's lots of gatherings, there's lots of, of campaigns. But then I really um, appreciate and, um, and honor all these um, women and men alike who are training, going out of their way to train women and empower women. One of the things I would really like to bring to the forefront, particularly with the, with the um, increasing measures against the COVID-19 pandemic, is financial literacy. I feel that that's one of the biggest things that will hold women back once places begin to close up again. And okay. it's something, whatever means they're closing up or they're not, I feel that there's lots of opportunities out there for women if they have the, the skills they require to use these technologies. So I feel that financial literacy, digital literacy needs to be brought to the forefront and more sensitization needs to be made available for women to understand the opportunities that exist in technology. And more men come to the table. He for she, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Uh, uh, Helena Manyari, thank you so much. We hope to have you again and again in this program. Uh, uh, Baakwen, your, your final word, we are, about we are concluding the program. Well, um, my final word to this is that um, as a home, a woman who owns a home, if you cannot create an impact in your home because a home is the smallest segment of the society, so you need to start creating an impact in your home before you can create an impact in the society. And I think that women should be more tolerant ab amongst each other. They should be able to, you know, um, bring out um, their skills. They should be able to be to be bold enough, you know, to come out and showcase what they have because women are too shy and they are still in that archaic mentality. And I think that women should be able to be an asset rather than a liability because in our homes today women are not financially independent so i think that financial independence should be one of the most important topic women should be able to sit and discuss thank you for glenn thank you for representing the men today in the studio uh, of course we, we gave the women the opportunity to speak more because i know that we are going to have uh, we're going to invite you for uh, exciting political uh, debates as this is your first edition uh, your first participation in the program just 30 seconds for your conclusion Right. to me I do I feel that we should have we should change our mentality and we should try to work towards gender equity. That's basically uh, uh, accepting the fact that there's been some disadvantages and trying to first of all curve those advantages before now we go to like to educate equality where the man and the woman have an equal playing field. That's my own point of view of how the future should look like. Madam Giselle de Tamben. Yes, uh, I would like to thank you for to have really used the technology to bring all of us around the world to discuss this issue. I hope to have more like this. You know, be, I, 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 I was really happy to have some a sister from another country, another one from U.S., etc. So you have leveraged the technology to bring all of us to this, uh, this global world, this, this world. And uh, I would like to bring women and all the community to really think critically, to really be innovative, because what has happened with the pandemic is that there are a whole se many sectors who have collapsed, so we have to be innovative, inventive. Thank you. Thank you. Natalie, you have 30 seconds. I would like to conclude by saying that I think uh, more women should be now as, as an entrepreneurship and investment ecosystem builder. My focus is always on the younger generation. I always like to look at the girl child. I think we have a lot of future with the girl child if we do the things in the right way. So I would think that we need to really encourage our mothers and our sisters and our fathers and our brothers to do a lot in educating the girl child and bringing them up differently from the way we were brought up make them see the society differently, see life differently, and see that dreaming is possible. Now, um, before I, I, I conclude, I'd, I'd like to say that if you want to take the courses, some, some person, someone asks the question, you can go to Evolve Cameroon Entrepreneurship Academy. You can type that online and you'll be able to find it. Evolve, and it's, as in evolution, you'll be able to find 
Anyway, I'm going to send that to the person uh, via WhatsApp. I want to thank you, Madam Giselle Itamben, President uh, in charge of supporting female entrepreneurs, Natalie Kembu, uh, Communication and Investment uh, Consultant, Fucha Glenn, uh, Youth Leader. We want to thank you, Ba Akwen, a politician. We want to thank you, uh, Madam uh, Lumbi uh, Mulambo, CEO and fund, founder of uh, GB Dondolo, and also a UN a Global Leader. We thank you, uh, Helen Manyi Are, uh, CEO of the Change Engine. We want to thank you for being part of the program. We hope to have you again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the technical crew, who made it possible uh, for us to have this program and on behalf of the administration and the news department of my media prime i also want to thank amy banda who contributed enormously to to give us the contacts as well as uh, natalie kimbo we thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching uh the rebroadcast comes up every sunday at uh, 10 a.m and training same time next week for another edition of 90 minutes in africa only on my media prime the african eye bye bye